Internal Revenue Service, IRS Tax News. Electronic options on irs.gov are available 24-7. Save time online for filing information and help. IR 2021-94, April 27, 2021, Washington. The Internal Revenue Service today urged taxpayers and tax professionals to continue using electronic options to speed the processing of tax returns, refunds, and payments. So like many businesses, the IRS is trying to reduce the paperwork. They're trying to reduce the phone calls. They're trying to get everybody to do the tax returns for the electronic filing. They're giving options for software linking with third party providers to help provide those options for software to electronically file and possibly give your banking information so that they can not issue a check, but rather give you a payment electronically as well. So irs.gov showcases many task-based tools. There's a link to that here and features uh, to help people navigate their taxes. All, all are available 24-7, 365. Timely processing of tax returns and refund issuance is especially important during the pandemic. To speed refunds and avoid delays in processing, the IRS strongly advises taxpayers to file electronically with direct deposit as soon as they have the information they need. So during the pandemic, of course, the IRS has kind of stepped up their push to reduce the type of paper filing, to reduce the paperwork and be in compliance with social distancing. Although I have a suspicion that, the, you know, this is the way they've been going for a long time. So they probably are using this to kind of push more towards that area to get everybody basically away from the paper file and try to file electronically and trying to get the payment to be given electronically right into the bank account in other words instead of the paper check now that is typically beneficial for the taxpayer as well the use of software greatly reduces the, uh, the likelihood of making an error it's faster typically to get your refund if you're getting a refund by filing electronically and getting the refund may get given to you directly into the bank instead of a paper check but if you owe money you might not be so concerned you might just be more concerned with avoiding penalties and interest further penalties and interest if you owe money so you might not be as concerned if you owe money to paper file or send them a check although again it's nice to have the check clear earlier so that you could basically double check in your system you know that they got the check at least some people also have concerns with giving their information to third-party providers for tax software and whatnot, and that is a, a concern as well. These big companies, you hope they're hope they're trustworthy and whatnot, but you gotta you gotta work through them to issue the information as well. Obviously, the IRS is pushing towards that so that um, people can file electronically with mainly some of these big third-party types of softwares. So, in any case, simple options to make filing easier. Check irs.gov for the latest tax information, including the latest on economic impact payments. There's a link to that here. And tax refund status. There's a link to that, too. There's no need to call. So they're, please, they're saying, like most companies, please don't call us. We don't really want to talk to you. But uh, that's like most companies are at this point in time. And again, they're kind of uh, tapering back due to the social distancing. But, of course, they probably want to taper back anyways because it would be faster if they can lead everybody to their website and other kind of resources. So consider IRS free file. There's a link to the free file here. Taxpayers who want to prepare and file their tax returns electronically for free can use IRS free file. So the free file will give you links to third party software that will have a free option typically if your income level is below a certain threshold and possibly other kind of requirements. So you can go there and kind of sort through those offers and see if you can find one that would be applicable to you as you do that remember that you want to keep in mind possibly the name brand of what what software you're looking at might be uh, important to you because the, the bigger the name brand or the bigger the brand or some software might be easier to navigate than other software for example but there's different thresholds as to which software would be free from the different brands you also want to make sure if you have a state requirement that you pick a software that provides the state requirement and if you have refundable credits like the earned income tax credit possibly child tax credit make sure the software can do that as well so this program offers brand name tax software for taxpayers with an income of seventy-two thousand dollars or less in 2020 those who earned more can use free file fillable forms the electronic version of irs paper forms so you have the free file fillable forms here now, I wouldn't recommend the free file fillable forms 
too much if your if your income is over 72 by a, a good amount then it's possible that your tax return is complicated enough that you would probably at least want to use some type of software so that you can limit any kind of errors that you might have and get suggestions about uh, the tax code and possibly get tax advice at that point in time i have talked to some people that basically don't like the idea of using software at all these big brand name softwares in order to file the tax return even though that's kind of the way the irs is going so i'm, I'm thinking at some point in time especially with the complexity of the tax code and the, the need to file electronically they're trying to get people to use these these third-party softwares but if you don't want to use those for whatever reason then you might possibly use the free file fillable forms to still file electronically and get it get the refund possibly a little bit faster rather than paper filing and of course you still have you know the paper filing option but it it does get more complicated to do it that way cuz you do have to do more math involved in it and uh, you don't have the nice little features that tell you <laughs> whether or not you made an an error or not or suggestions uh, as you do typically with the with the software so we have uh, some people will need to file a return to get a third economic impact payment and free file gives people the ability to do that for free check payment options on irs.gov there's a link to the payment options here several electronic payment options are available to taxpayers view an account and learn about other ways to pay such as online installment agreement so remember if you can't pay the tax this year and many more people might be in a situation where they they're you know restricted on the cash make sure that you file because your goal is to avoid penalties and interest and then go and set up a payment agreement an installment payment and that's typically what you want to do that's the general rule and then you're in good standing with the irs you can avoid some penalties hopefully you will be charged interest but you're at least communicating with the irs and that usually gives you a better standing point if you have problems in the future rather than simply ignoring them and not setting up a payment agreement and not filing the tax return if required to do so that will will probably not cause problems in the short run but the irs will slowly work and then somewhere down the road could be like three years later as you ignore letters they will start they will possibly take collection action at that point in time so uh, you want to basically not do that by keeping in good con communication even if you can't pay the tax bill on it so find answers to many tax questions using the interactive tax assistant there's a link to that here the ITA is a tool that provides answers to several tax law questions specific to an individual circumstances. Online tools for tax professionals, eServices is a suite of web-based tools that allows tax professionals, reporting agents, uh, mortgage industry payers, and others to complete transactions online with the IRS. There's a link to the eServices here. Other useful tools and features. The useful tools and features continue, amazingly enough. We have the Get My Payment tool. There's a link to that here. People can find out when their third economic impact payment is scheduled to be sent or when and how IRS sent it with the Get My Payment application. Get My Payment updates once a day, usually overnight. So if you're checking Get My Payment like every hour, not it's not going to help you unless you forgot like last time you checked because they only update it once a day. So possibly once in the morning, once in the evening, maybe more than that you're being obsessive if you're checking it more than that most likely so in any case filing options there's a link to that here find complete tax filing information for individuals businesses and self-employed taxpayers charities and nonprofits, international taxpayers and government entities get an identity protection pin there's a link to that here ip pins are available to all taxpayers an ip pin is a six digit number that prevents someone else from filing a tax return using another taxpayer's social security number so this used to only be available if someone had been a victim of identity theft and and someone filed a tax return in essence with their social security number in order to get their refund then they, they in order to prevent that in the future they they sent out and allowed people to use this pen number along with the social security number now if you're worried and you want to take proactive action which might be a good thing because social security numbers, to be honest, they've been, you know, it would be nice if we had a social security number that would kind of change from year to year or something like that because we've had the social security number since our whole lives and we have to give it to all these financial institutions and whatnot. It's kind of likely you would think that someone might have the social security number 
and possibly could use that to file a tax return and then try to get a refund from it. So in order to safeguard at least that point, uh, you can basically file for a PIN. And the PIN is something that you have to give along with the social security number. And it changes every year, like which makes sense. So now you don't have the same number every year. So it would change every year. And that would be a lot more difficult for someone to steal over your entire life, you would think, or something like that. So you could do that proactively. It might be a little bit more burdensome to do, but it could safeguard you from identity theft and having someone try to file your tax return. And then when you file, the the IRS would kick it back and say someone already filed a tax return using that number, which would be quite annoying. So the IPPIN is known only to the taxpayer and the IRS and helps the IRS verify the identity of taxpayer when filing an electronic or paper tax return. View and account. There's a link to the view and account here. Online account is an online system that allows people to securely access their individual account information. So you can just log in just like any other kind of super cool social media website software. So taxpayers can view taxes, owed, balance uh, details, information on a most recent tax return, payment plan details, and more can all be found on the IRS website in the view account section. So get a tax record. Request a copy of tax return online. Get transcript service is for individual taxpayers to retrieve their own transcripts for their own purposes. So you can get your own transcripts if you want to do that here. So download tax forms and instructions. Current and prior year forms are available. Other online options include IRS eBooks and accessible versions for people with disabilities. So when you're doing the tax return, if you have a question on a particular area, you can download the forms and the instructions. So if you're doing individual taxes, you might want to go to the 1040 and look at the instructions for the 1040. That's usually the place to start. And then you can branch out from there to other forms and whatnot as you as you need to when you when you're researching what you what you need to do. So the tax withholding estimator, there's a link to that here. Use of this tool can help people bring their taxes paid closer to what is owed. The IRS encourages everyone to pour, perform a quote paycheck checkup end quote to be sure the right amount of tax is withheld based on their personal situation. And this is probably more relevant right now. This is basically an estimator. It's kind of like tax software used to be, you know, if you want to do a projection into the future, especially for more complex tax returns, you have to use tax software generally to kind of estimate it because the laws will change, the tax rates could change, and, you know, you're going to take last year's circumstances and try to project out into the future for the next year. And their their tax withholding estimator is kind of like that. It's basically a tax projection tools you can actually use it to make kind of projections on taxes and what what whatnot but then you can use that of course to then adjust your withholdings and that's going to be important right now because many people are going through big uh, spurts in terms of their job right they they're switching jobs they're going from one job to the other they might be picking up gig work so you don't really have what you used to have you know it used to be at one point in time you know you had uh, one household families right and the job you know the one household person that worked worked in the same place for their entire life right and then so your income was fairly standard fairly straightforward the employer can calculate it but that's not the case right now people are working many different jobs and many different people in the household are working that really complicates the progressive tax structure system to try to figure out how much the withholdings are going to be and if you're picking up gig work and that then that really kind of complicates things you pretty much need a projection software to do that because you have to pay the tax while the year goes meaning you don't you had you have no idea how much tax you owe until the end of the year when you actually do the tax return because of you know all the variance that people are going through with with the different jobs that are being picked up right now so in order to estimate that you could use the tax withholding estimator and so it's a something to check out free options for the military and some veterans we got the mill tax Military uh, One Source's tax service provides online software for eligible individuals to electronically file a federal return and up to three state returns for free. Now, the mill taxes is great. Note that if you're under 72,000, then I believe you even have a like and you're in the military. And if you're in the military, then, you know, thanks for your service. But if you're under that threshold, you might have access, more access than usual to the other options, the free software from the third party providers as well. There might be more people that, more of the providers that give the higher threshold 
uh, point. If the mill tax, if your income is over that threshold, I believe it's still free there. The question I, I'm not clear on is if you had access to a free option for mill tax and access to a free option for something like uh, like the other software, the proprietary software, like a TurboTax or something like that, which would be better in that situation. The mill tax is geared directly for people in the military, and there are specialized things that you want to be in, aware of in there. But the the tax software, like a TurboTax, has been market proven. You know, it's it's the leader in the marketplace. Whereas the mill tax, I don't think, is a, a proprietary software. So I'm not sure that their their system of just going through the questions and filling out the tax return, their interview process is as good as some of the top of the line proprietary softwares are. And I think they do have military options within their questionnaire for something like a turbo tax or something like that. So that's just something to keep in mind. If your income's over the threshold, you still have access for it for free. If you're under 72,000, you might be able to get the top of the line software basically for free or the mill tax. And then the question is, well, which would be better? I don't know. The proprietary software be being proprietary means that it's beat out the competition on the market to some degree. So that gives me some confidence in it. The mill tax, I'm not sure it's it's in the market in the same way. So I'm not sure if just in general it would be as high a quality, but it's geared specifically and maybe it, maybe it is. I don't know. But it is geared specifically for the military, which, of course, is, has specialized needs there. So in any case, Military One Source is a program funded by the Department of Defense that provides a range of free sources for military members, veterans, and other families. More information about One Source is available on militaryonesource.mil. There's a link to that here. Tax Online Tax Deadline is May 17th. So although the tax filing deadline has been extended to May 17th, 2021 from April 15th, the IRS continues to process electronic tax returns, issue direct deposit refunds, and accept electronic payments. As of April 16th, the IRS received over 110 million tax returns and issued over 210 billion in refunds. Overall, the IRS anticipates 9 out of 10 taxpayers will receive their refund within 21 days of when they file their file electronically with direct deposit if there are no issues with their tax return. So qualifiers here, one, refund, they're saying 21 days. That's an average, obviously. So if there's any kind of issue, it could take longer than that. And two, they're basically saying when people file electronically, meaning use the tax software and file electronically and have the direct deposit, meaning you give them the banking and routing information so they can deposit it directly. So average 21 days, if <laughs> you filed using the tax software and give them the banking information. Uh, and so, so keep that in mind.